Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Fer and this is a quick update on the video about the Collatz conjecture because there was a very positive uh, response. I didn't expect that. A lot of you guys have a lot of very good ideas that left me thinking and I was even contacted by some mathematicians who told me like, hey, your tiles are cool, but can they help us to figure these problems out? And so uh, I want to stop thinking about this. I need to do other things. And so I'm making this video out there to put these ideas out in the world and make them someone else's problem. Okay, so here are four ways that you could help to make progress with the Collatz conjecture. The first one is generalizing the super awesome tiles for the QN plus one trees. Okay, so you know how the Collatz tree is made with uh, the rule 3N plus one? Well, what if we had QN plus one? where Q can be any odd number. And it has to be an odd number so that the, the result of this is an even number, right? And so, for example, if Q was equal to five, we would actually need five different tiles. But if Q was equal to seven, we would need four. And I can show you here. Uh, here I calculated uh, the, 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 the formulas for the different tiles. Um, and you basically can see this is the, the power of two that you are dividing before reaching an odd number. And in this case, you are dividing uh, by four again. Uh, sorry about that. And you are reaching uh, a, num a number of the form 10n plus 6, which are the nodes in this tree. And so, yeah. And for, but for example, here, uh, uh, th this is the 7n plus 1 tree. And you can see that we only need four different tiles to get all the numbers. So it's interesting, right? Uh, there are different numbers of tiles, and I have not been able to to identify what's the rule in this case. And so this is something that, that you could uh, work out. Uh, the goal here would be to write a code and this code uh, takes as a parameter Q uh, and then it tells you how many tiles you need to construct this tree. And it also like, uh, after that, you would be able to tell it, in, to give it any constellation uh, in that tree. And it would, should be able to give you the equation for that constellation in that tree. And that would require us to like invent a new way, a new notation to describe these, uh, to describe the constellations. Because if the number of tiles changes, uh, we cannot use letters, right? I think we would need to use like numbers. I don't know. Uh, you figure it out. Uh, and, but, and it would be difficult because, for example, here in my code, uh, here you can see how I define the the nodes. I just basically, this is like the, the N and the S for every kind of node. And I just hard coded it inside. Uh, and this is important because when we thread, uh, we, I basically like declare a new node and this allows me to access dynamically the, the right uh, constants for that kind of node. And so if we are working with this QN plus one tree that we don't know how many different tiles it's gonna have, I'm not sure how you would be able to access all of these different constants uh, dynamically. Uh, but I'm, like, I'm sure it can be done. I'm just not sure how to do that. And so that's one way that you could make progress with the Collatz conjecture, giving us uh, a way to have all the possible equations of all the possible constellations in all of the possible trees. Uh, a second way uh, is just, apparently when I started looking into the 5n plus one, uh, at first, I thought that seven started a cycle, but now it seems that it's an infinite sequence. And that's weird because like in the video, uh, I was very convinced that an infinite sequence was impossible because like the, the whole thing I mentioned about how the, the exponents would need would diverge, right? But then, uh, yeah, when you use uh, five N plus one where N is equal to seven, uh, you do get a, what seems to be an infinite sequence. And, and that is exciting. This is exciting. When you don't know something, when something challenges what you know, that means that there's a lot to learn. And so here what we can learn is just what's going on with the equation of this constellation. Uh, that, that's what I want to see. Like what happens every time you add a new tile in the, in the constellation for n equals seven, what's happening there? How is it possible that this is infinite? And can we predict what tile like, like the order of the tiles in this constellation? Can we predict it? And if we can predict it, what can we learn from that prediction? And if we cannot predict it, well, what's stopping us? Like, I, I don't know, there's a lot to learn that in here in trying to predict the order of the tiles in this seemingly infinite sequence. And then uh, also, when, if we figure all of this out, well, can we use that to predict which numbers are gonna have 
infinite sequences, not just in the 5n plus 1 tree, but in all the possible trees. Because then we would be able to bring this back to the 3n plus 1 tree, the collapse tree, the most famous one, and be able to tell if it can have uh, an, an infinite sequence after all, right? And so, yeah, I think there's a lot to learn in looking at, at the constellation, at these seemingly infinite constellations. I don't saying infinite because I'm holding hope that maybe it's uh, just a really, really huge cycle. And talking about cycles, this actually brings me to my next point, which is using this formula to find all the possible cycles in a QN plus one tree. Because this formula is very easy to generalize, just change the three by a Q, and that's it, if you've generalized it, it works, or, or it should work, that's the thing. Okay, so let me uh, quickly explain uh, a, a few things about this equation. So, in theory, you would be able to just use x and y, which uh, f fulfill this condition. But the problem is that when you do that, you find that some cyclical constellations have a non-integer b. And, and that's a problem, because if b doesn't have to be an integer, then we have no way to guarantee that the constellations we are finding are made only of integer numbers, right? Okay, so you solve it by multiplying by gamma, and gamma is the, the, the free constant in the equation for the constellation. When you multiply by gamma, you ensure that b is going to be an integer number. Great. But the problem is that these integer numbers can be huge, can be anything. Okay, so then you, we take the mod, uh, the, the modulo of, by, the, by these uh, constants, and we are going to get an equation that is also valid, uh, but, the, but the best thing is that we reduce the, sh the search space because instead of having to search all the way up to gamma, we only have to, to search up to, well, Q to the R and, and 2 to the W. So we've reduced the search space to something much more manageable. Uh, we ensure that B is an integer, stuff like that. Uh, but the problem is that even though we can find numerical solutions for this, when we use those numerical solutions for tr to try to uh, so, sort of like reverse engineer the formula of the constellation to find the, the cycle, sometimes we find valid results and sometimes we don't. So for example, here's my code. Uh, it should be much, much, it was much shorter, but then I started putting a lot of restrictions to get rid of nonsensical re uh, results. And I'll show you in a bit. So, but for example, one example that it finds is this, and this is correct. This is the, the constellation for uh, a Lannister node followed by a Stark node. This is correct. Uh, and okay, uh, uh, well, the, the code can t find the, the starting point, but it cannot tell you what kind of node it is. So you have to calculate the three different kinds of nodes. And here it finds that, yeah, minus two. Yeah, this is correct. Uh, sorry, minus 20. Uh, minus 20 is one of the nodes in one of the negative cycles of the collapse tray. It goes minus 20, minus 14, minus 20, minus 14. Uh, that's, that's one of the cycles. And, and it found it. Okay, it works. But then it finds also these numbers, and none of these numbers are, are cycles. What happens is that these numbers start sequences, start constellations that have the same structure as a constellation, namely a start node followed by a Lannister node. So in that sense, it, 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 this code is finding the right structure, but it's not finding the right starting places. I don't know, I'm very confused at what, what's going on here. Oh, here, another example. It found correctly, minus 14, Look, here it found minus 20, and here it found, found minus 14. Both of these are part of a cycle. This is correct. Uh, but then it goes and finds these ones, and, and I'm, I'm not sure. It's just, there must be some kind of criteria that I'm not seeing that you should be able to put into the numbers you are searching to filter or, or all the solutions that don't make sense and, stay, and keep only the, the solutions that are actual cycles. But I don't know how to do that. So now that's your problem. I have to work on other things. So figure it out. Uh, so anyway. And finally, the, the last way that you can uh, uh, help us to make some progress with the Collatz conjecture is to build this thing that I'm calling the super awesome fractal. Um, and basically, the thing is that, it is, well, this is inspired by the Mandelbrot set. Obviously, this is the Mandelbrot set. This is not the super awesome fractal. I haven't done it. Uh, you do it. And basically, the idea is that we would be able to put, for example, all the n's, the, the value of n in the x-axis and the value of q in the y-axis. And then we should be able to calculate the, the stopping time for each combination of q and n. Uh, and stopping time is how many steps until you either reach a cycle or if you are already in a cycle, 
how long until you come back at the beginning, right? So that's basically what we are calculating. Or, or if you are in an infinite sequence, uh, like how much until you reach a certain limit? Let's say, like, let's say, okay, so if we get to ten thousand steps, we stop, right? No, no matter what. And so we should be able to calculate this and assign it different colors to each pixel. And the result should be something like a fractal. I expect it to look cool like the Mandelbrot set or something like that. And I expect that, that, that if we make this image, we should be able to notice some patterns. Maybe there are some, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what we would find, but I, I hope that we would find some patterns that help us to understand where cycles appear in different trees or like how the length of the sequences changes in different trees, stuff like that. And maybe that would be able to, would be able to help us to understand uh, the nature of whatever is going on in here. So anyway, that's my quick update. Those are four ways you can help uh, doing progress with the collapse conjecture. And now, uh, obviously, uh, there's a GitHub with all of the codes in the description. I, I upload all just your all your stuff there. Um, but uh, I'm not going to engage with it uh, for uh, at least, I don't know, a month or two because I have to work on other stuff. And I have a very obsessive personality, as you can tell. Once I focus on something, I focus on that thing and only that thing. So I need to, to turn collats off in my brain so that I can do other stuff. Uh, but yeah, after I'm done with a, a QFT episode two, um, I'm going to come back to this, uh, see what you guys did. Uh, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. Uh, let, let's see if we can find more cool stuff uh, or and learn. Actually, yeah, that's the, more, <laughs> that's the most important part, right? Let's see if we can learn some cool stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.